The creator of the ABC comedy Speechless says it's a story he's wanted to tell for nearly 20 years. The sitcom is loosely based on his own life growing up with an older brother who had a disability. And while it breaks new ground by putting a special needs character front and center, it's the authenticity of the family surrounding him that gives this show its powerful resonance. Here's ABC's Nick Watt. One thing I like about this show is that you don't live in, like, the friend's apartment that's all lovely. You live in a terrible house. We do. It's not aspirational. And you're self-confessed idiots. Yeah. 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 He's never had an aide speak for him before. Imagine the elevator pitch for Speechless. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, no. That means he's uh, laughing. Kid with cerebral palsy, terrible house, pushy, protective British mum. Not her. Life's too short. According to the district, it's acceptable alternate access. Oh, look, there's someone else on the acceptable alternate access now. What Boy, does it work. I was very scared that it was going to be terrible. Sappy, sentimental, overly dramatic, and our show is not that. The show is unique in today's TV landscape and very necessary. JJ has cerebral palsy. He's the speechless of the title played. I'm sorry, love, you were saying? By Micah Fowler, who also has cerebral palsy. That's the finger. You're making us laugh just with, like, little glances. Is it tough to do that? It was tough at the beginning. This role made me a better actor because I have to use facial expressions. And you got to be funny. And that too, yes. Why do you have to be British in this show? I vehemently wanted to be American. Mm -hmm. um, and actually was shouted down in the end. And I think you can maybe get away with a little bit more and you can... You can. Yeah. You can be a lot ruder in a British accent, it turns out. D d you or... didn't know that? <laughs> I take advantage of that every day of my life. Because <laughs> you're a slightly unlikely couple in a way. You're saying she's too hot for me. You're flat out saying she's too hot for me. Listen, internet. <laughs> I know I'm saying that. I do make Minnie laugh in real life, mm -hmm. and Minnie has occasionally said, uh, I smell good, and relationships have been built on less. Yes, they have. <laughs> in the van! This is the scene I think defines the show. Dad's just stolen what he thought was trash on the curb. Mom, someone just stole everything I was gonna take to college. It was actually someone's possession. Drive! Drive! We gotta take it back. What are we gonna say? This is so humiliating. Yeah, I'll do it. Seriously? How are you okay with this? Because all this stuff, other people's opinions, it's nothing. You know what's not nothing? Is the doctor tells you there's something wrong with your kid. All the things he's never gonna do, and it's a nice long list. That's a speech that Scott Silveri's dad gave to him. Scott Silveri was an executive producer on Friends, created this show, his brother has cerebral palsy. My dad wrote that. He's not a poet or anything, but uh, but he's a guy whose experience really crafted his worldview. I wish he had more speeches like that. <laughs> we had 23 episodes to fill. I'm sorry it took us so long to get in touch. Here's a sneak peek of tomorrow night's episode, the theme, cheating in school. I have received some complaints about JJ from the other students. They're jealous. They are. Of his constant, unpunished, insanely obvious cheating. What? Yes, there's a message, Action. but clearly this still has to play by the normal rules of TV comedy. So I've watched this with my eight-year-old boy, and if he didn't find it funny, he'd walk out of the room. My eight-year-old finds it hilarious. Our kids are growing up with this being normal. What have you learned personally hanging out with Micah? I've learned that he's very, very funny. He's a great friend. He has worked very hard to get this part and is having a ton of fun doing it. When I found out I booked the role, I was so excited. These look stupid. Fun and fulfillment for all. My sister actually had a brain hemorrhage at birth, but I've dealt with the bullying and the staring. I was like so passionate about the script when I read it. You know, as long as I've been doing this for a living, I've been wanting to depict a family like the one that I grew up in with, you know, somebody who is a little different. You really do look nice. What is it, your, your hair? What is this? How do you think I normally look? <laughs> you know. Cedric Yardber plays the school janitor turned JJ's aide. One of the things I love about your character is that, you know, you are entirely untrained. Sure. You have no idea what you're doing. You have no yeah. idea how to react. Yeah, I'm the audience uh, in, in many, 
many ways. You can just come and talk to us and it will be okay. Rolling. The show walks that fine line, doesn't want to be too mawkish or offensive. We had a joke a few weeks back and my line was, uh, having a disability is really expensive. It's almost not even worth it. And that joke itself just mm -hmm. pushes the boundary a little bit. And then Scott came down and gave the note, said, oh, Micah should laugh at that joke. This will only work if he tells us it's okay. Yeah. You know? No more special ed. Brilliant, right? It's difficult for us to be told, look at this differently. So what you do is you make people laugh and see them and have them observe a family that lives like this. And maybe then their interaction with someone who uses a wheelchair on the street is different. I'm Nick Watt for Nightline. Micah, what's up? In Los Angeles. You can catch Speechless Wednesday at 8.30 right here on ABC.